Please subscribe to Bear, 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 Nerd Fun. Smash the like button. Goodbye. Hail to all. Well, we, we do not need. We do not. Hail to all. We do not. Hail to all. Now come on, come on Hollywood. Hollywood. Stop, Stop smelling your own your farts. farts. You might get you might mistaken, get mistaken, mistaken for, for arse sniffers. sniffers. <laughs> Remember when you Remember go woke, you, you go broke. Go. Hail, Hail to the Hail. fandom menace. Hail to the Phantom Minute. This is Bear at Bear. Bear Nerd Fun. Well, we got some big news. Bob Iger admits George Lucas felt betrayed with Disney's version of Star Wars by John F. Trent. Disney's CEO Bob Iger admitted George Lucas felt betrayed with Disney's direction with Star Wars. Iger made the comments in his new book, the Ride of a Lifetime, Lessons Learned from 15 Years as CEO of Walt Disney Company. As reported, Reddit user Lollafrail for all, wow, I think that broke my tongue. In the Star Wars League subreddit, Iger, di Iger discusses the sale of Star Wars to Disney and Lucas' role in the film. During the purchase process, Lucas informed Iger and Disney that he had outlines made up for three new movies that would allow the events of Return of the Jedi. It would follow the events of the Return of the Jedi. At some point in the process, George told me that he had completed outlines for three new movies. He agreed to send us three copies of the outlines. One for me, one for Alan Braveman, and one for Alan Horn, who would just been hired to run our studio. Alan Horn and I read George's outline and decided we needed to buy them, though we made clear in the purchase agreement that we would not be contractually updated to adhere to the plot lines he laid out. Well, I think that's where George Lucas kind of messed up. He should have insisted, insisted that be part of the contract and that the plot line be followed. That's my opinion. Not only did Iger and Disney purchase the outlines, but they also made it clear that Lucas' new role with Star Wars would be to act as creative consultant and that he would not have creative control over the next three films. Iger makes it clear that Disney's Star Wars team would not be beholden to Lucas' ideas, though. Yeah. Kathleen Kennedy... Oh, we're going to take care of these stories. Lied through her teeth. And we were all saying she lied. If they were going to take care of these stories. Lied straight through her teeth. Straight stared George Lucas in his eye and lied. Yep. I can confirm that he, Kathleen Kennedy, J.J. Abrams, and Michael Arndt were not going to follow Lucas' outline. Early on, Kathy brought J.J. and Michael Arndt up to Northern California to meet with George at his ranch and talk about their ideas for the film. George immediately got upset as they began to describe the plot, and it dawned on him that we weren't using one of the stories he submitted during the negotiations. Well, we always thought that George Lucas' outline didn't get used. A lot of us said that, giving our opinions, guess what? Those YouTubers that said it were absolutely right. I think Nerdrotic said it. I think Doomcock said it. A few others said it. Yeah. George immediately got upset as they began to describe the plot, and it dawned on him they weren't using the stories as he submitted during the negotiations. Then, Iger reveals he knew Kennedy, Alan Horn, and J.J. Abrams had already planned out the direction they wanted to take in the new Star Wars. That direction was mostly, definitely not George's. So, we got Jake Skywalker instead of Luke Skywalker. We got a disgraceful Han Solo death killed by his own son. Yeah, 
we got crap stories and basically Disney in a way I guess they kind of lied to everyone they said they were going to take care of it and steward it not a very good job of stewarding something the truth was <laughs> there was no truth that's what the truth was Iger admits he should have handled the situation better and that he should have prepared Lucas for the meeting with Art Abrams and Arndt. I'd been so careful since our first conversation not to mislead him in any way. Yeah, right, sure. And I didn't think I had now. But I could have handled it better. Yeah, right. Back to the article. I should have prepared him for the meeting with J.J. and Michael Arndt and told him about our conversations, that we felt it was better to go in another direction. I could have talked through this with him and possibly avoided angering him by not surprising him. So this is why George Lucas referred to Disney as white slavers. It makes sense now. Why else would he say something like that? It had to have been something that really upset him and angered him. George Lucas, if you ever happen, if you hear this, you need to sue Disney for destroying your masterpiece and your works. Destroying a mythos. Literally. Mm-hmm. That's my opinion. And, yeah. Now, in the first meeting with him and about the future of Star Wars, George felt betrayed, and while this whole process would never have been easy for him, we'd gotten off to an unnecessarily rocky start. Well, you guys had secret meetings behind his back after you sealed the deal, and probably before you even sealed the deal, you were having discussions about going in a complete different direction. Not only did George feel betrayed by Disney, but he was unimpressed by their final product in The Force Awakens. Iger's details George's initial impression after seeing the film. Just prior to the global release, Kathy screened The Force Awakens for George. He didn't hide his disappointment. There's nothing new, he said, in each of the films in the original trilogy. It was important to him to present new worlds new stories, new characters, new technologies. In this one, he said, there weren't enough visual and technical leaps forward. Uh-huh. Yeah. Iger admits George's criticism were on point and that The Force Awakens did not provide anything new to Star Wars fans. However, he criticized George for not understanding the pressure Disney was under. Oh, boo-hoo, cry me a river. Oh, you were under pressure. You frickin' dropped the ball. You had an open field, no one guarding the goal. You could have ran that ball to the goal and you could have made the best touchdown in history. Game balance for movies, making good Star Wars movies. Could have done that. He wasn't wrong, but he also wasn't appreciating the pressure we were under to give fans a film that felt quintessentially Star Wars. What the hell is that? Quintessentially. That fancy speak saying that it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's real Star Wars when it's not using fancy words? Star Wars was not quintessential. It was not Definitely wasn't to the fans. Iger then reveals The Force Awakens and its lack of imagination was Disney designed through and through. We'd intentionally created a world that was visually and tonally connected to the earlier films, to not stray too far from what people loved and expected, and George was criticizing us for the very thing we were trying to do. 
Iger then states he believes J.J. Abrams achieved the near impossible with The Force Awakens. It was a rehash of everything from The New Hope. A rehash. That's all it was. It wasn't original. It's like a glorified fan film. Looking back with the perspective of several years and a few more Star Wars films, I believe J.J. achieved the near impossible, creating a perfect broad pride between what had been and what was to come man full of malarkey George Lucas comments about Disney and Star Wars in 2015 these comments are not groundbreaking Lucas was open about his criticism of the Force Awakens when the film debuted he told Vanity Fair in 2015 the issue was ultimately they looked at the stories and they said we want to make something for the fans. People don't actually realize it's actually a soap opera and it's all about family problems. It's not about spaceships. So they decided they didn't want to use those stories. They decided they were going to do their own thing. So I decided, fine. Lucas also called Disney white slavers. Now we know why he called them white slavers, back to the article in an interview with Variety. Back in 2015, The Force Awakens opened in theaters. Lucas stated, I sold them to white slavers that takes these things and he ultimately described The Force Awakens in a backhanded comment. I think the fans are going to love it. It's very much the kind of movie they've been looking for. I think he was being condescending. I really do. In that same interview, he discussed that Disney did not want to use his outlines for a sequel Star Wars trilogy. They looked at the stories and they said, we want to make something for the fans. They decided they didn't want to use those stories. They decided they were going to do their own thing. They weren't that keen to have me involved anyway. But if I get in there... I'm just going to cause trouble because they're not going to do what I want them to do. And I don't have the control to do that anymore. And all I would do is muck everything up. And so I said, okay, I will go my way and I'll let them go their way. George Lucas, you need not have done that. You should have sued them for ruining your mythos. The legend of George Lucas, mastermind of Star Wars, the creator of it. Beautiful stories that came forth from it while he owned it. In book, map, uh, really good games that came out of it. And as for Lucas' comments regarding Ryan Johnson's The Last Jedi, he would make a similar backhanded comment about the film, simply describing it as beautifully made. What do you make of Iger's comments? Just wanted to give a shout out to Data Racer because he broke this like 12 hours ago. On George Lewis seeing The Force Awakens for the first time, just prior to the global release, Kathy screened The Force Awakens for George and didn't hide his disappointment. Yeah, so Data Racer, he broke this 12 hours ago. So go check out um, Data Racer. I will leave his Twitter info in there. Give him a follow. Hail to the Phantom Menace. Afterthought. Google leak reveals multiple nerd culture websites included on Google Now search result blacklist. So I would behoove you. I'll link this article. I would behoove you to go read this. This was out August 16th. I'm surprised more people didn't see this. So I'll leave that in the link. Hail to the Phantom Menace. Now come on, come Hollywood. On, Hollywood. Stop, smelling Stop smelling your own, your own farts. farts. You, might you might get mistaken, get mistaken, mistaken for arse, arse sniffers. sniffers. <laughs> Remember when you Remember go woke, you, you go broke. Go. Please subscribe to Bear. Bear Bear Nerd Fund. Smash the like button. Goodbye.
Say hello. 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 Say hello. Hello. Say nerd fun. Nerd fun. Nerd fun. Nerd fun. Nerd fun. Say goodbye. 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 Hail, Hail to the Phantom Menace.